Hey guys, so a lot of people have been asking me, how would you write a song? You're so critical of how everyone else writes a song. How would you do it? Let's see how you would do it. So I can show you that, uh, uh, but I'm doing so knowing that you don't really want to know what I'm doing because you want to see a different format of writing. You want to be able to shit on me uh, for doing the same things that I criticize other bands of, and that's fine. But I just want you guys to know that when I criticize other bands, I don't want them to write like me. I want me to write like me, and I want them to write like them, and I want to know who they are in their writing. I already know who I am. I want to know who they are. If they're not showing me who they are, that's when I get critical. Anyway, um, I went back and uh, decided that a song I wanted to show you guys um, is the title track from the Devourer of Worlds record uh, from my death metal band, Ara. Um, this came out, I think in 2012, maybe a little later. It was probably written around 2012, uh, but I think this song in particular has pretty tight songwriting. Um, there's, I had a goal in mind. I like to write from titles first and then try to paint the music, uh, paint the idea of the title in the music uh, if, if my vocalist Adam allowed. Uh, and it ended up working out pretty well. Uh, I wanted this to, uh, prior to this point, the band had some um, usually pretty fast songwriting. Um, this one I wanted to be slow and plotting and still have some fast parts in there, but uh, I wanted it to tell a slow and plotting story. Uh, and uh, the goal of the band was kind of to try to take on what the path of like unique leadery technical death metal was at the turn of the century. Because right at the turn of the century, it seemed like everyone stopped writing riffs and started writing like open chugs and sweep arpeggios. And I wanted to take it further and have developed melodies uh, within the technical death metal umbrella. So that's what the goal of the band was. And I think this song kind of encaps encapsulates it pretty well. Uh, so I'm not going to play it start to finish. I'm going to show you the arrangement. I'm going to play it slow uh, and show you guys kind of what I did. Uh, so first of all, if you're curious about why the music sounds kind of weird, um, <coughs> I use a lot of weird open tunings. Um, and uh, I kind of just choose a tuning and decide to try to write a song in it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So for this particular song, I've got a low G sharp on the bottom. The next one is G, so it's it's one note shy of an octave. So I can get an octave shape with like the normal tritone shape. I know that that's pretty fucking weird. But I enjoy that uh, discordance of the, the open, the, the, two, the two strings flat fingered. So a lot of the songs ended up using that character to develop a lot of the melodies. On um, the next string, up, B, D, A sharp, and B again. Um, so what you have here is like a really wide range. Uh, you know, a lot of people would use a seven string, uh, you know, maybe even an eight string for stuff this low. Uh, but uh, I, I don't need any of that shit, so I, I wanted to just do it all on six string and have like a really wide tonal palette. So strong open, it sounds like shit. But for if I wanted to do like flat fingered intervals, I've got a lot of discordance at my disposal, so I can make some pretty nasty sounding tunes. Uh, but anyway, I'll show you the first riff of the song, and uh, I'll, I'll kind of break it down a little bit. Um, so, like I told you guys, I have, uh, I'm able to make an octave shape and I can come into it with a flat finger, like the one note shy of an octave. So uh, that, that's kind of how I built this first riff. So I'll just show you the first riff. I'll just show you kind of what a lot of the intervals are in there. Pretty nasty sounding chords. I couldn't tell you what the interval is. I just kind of choose the tones I like to hear and try to have the melody kind of stand on its own. My goal is to make like a hummable melody, uh, even though it's kind of gross sounding. So something that, you know, with, with music that's, uh, that's complicated, it's hard to make the shit be catchy. And uh, 
my goal is not to make it catchy so much as like you you have a a melody that you could chew on that actually defines what the song is otherwise you end up in this kind of genre uh having multiple songs sound the same and that was never my goal with this project uh so i have this interval in there uh that's one note higher than an octave gross sounding and then my open chugs are that uh g sharp against g so it just it's really unsettling sounding um you know aside from you know most people would have their open chugs be like a power chord but uh my goal was to have this be kind of as disgusting sounding as possible while still having <coughs> a, a fairly consonant melody written within it um so i'll show you the riff one more time <laughs> And that part, uh, that, that, that part I'm strumming uh, at the end there, uh, when I was lucky enough to have a second guitar player in the band, um, I was able to split that up and make it sound a lot more tight. So that's what one guitar is doing, and the other guitar is going. So not a very appealing sounding melody. But it ends up working for the phrase. So you have like a, a six eight feel here. And uh, there's been a few songs I've, I've shown you guys on this channel where uh, you know, it's hard to break from 6-8 and go into 4-4 four, four or, or any kind of like normal sounding meter. So I think I'd do that later. Can't even remember really. But uh, I'll show you guys the rest of the progression. But for the most part, the whole beginning of the song has that like 6-8 feel, or at least it's, it's in threes. Uh, so um, the next riff of the song is, is kind of like I don't want to call it a chorus, but it's the one part of the song that you're going to hear more than once. Uh, so what I did with this is, with this tuning, I have an octave shape with this fingering, which is pretty fucking weird. And uh, that's that, that's uh, so there's there's some strings in between there. Normally, if you want to make an octave shape, there's one string in between. There's two strings in between here. But what I can do with that is I like this open sound and I liked how that sounded with the, a chromatic descent uh, so the next riff I built on these notes and uh, going back to the like 6-8 kind of feel this is the kind of the whole riff fucking hard to play um sliding all that is i'm, I'm not uh I, I haven't played this material in a very long time so i'm not i'm not very good at it anymore um but uh there's there's a even though it's kind of all in threes the the way it loops within the phrase uh the way the the descending melody works you kind of have to pay attention to otherwise it kind of flip flops on you so the way that uh that higher stuff comes in that, that throws the, the uh, meter off when I get back into this position. That, that part's hard as a son of a bitch. Uh, you know, that's how it's played slow. I, can, I can't play it slow. I can only play it as if I'm playing a song. You know, that, that shows how great of a musician I am. Um, so I'll play that riff one more time. Uh, and uh, there's a transition now that uh, is, is probably the hardest part of the song. 
played it right for you, so I'm not gonna play it again. Uh, the reason that's so hard is uh, when I do uh, like cynic style double palm muted picks, I usually go with an upstroke first, which I think is pretty weird for a lot of people. Uh, but I have to go from uh, the third string to the sixth string. It's not an easy jump. And uh, unfortunately, when you're playing in a tuning this low on the lower string, it's very easy to knock off the fretboard. Um, but uh, after that transition, what I wanted to do was go back to the very first riff, but play it with a completely different kind of melody. I wanted to still have that kind of feeling, but with a completely different melody. So uh, the first riff of the song, I'll play it again for you. So now, when I come back into the riff that I wanted to mirror that, but in a kind of a different kind of progression, this is how it sounds. So uh, I wanted it to sound really regal sounding. Uh, you know, if we're having a, a song about like uh, an entity that proclaims itself as something that can devour the whole universe, I wanted it to sound like kind of regal. Uh, and uh, I have a lot of harmonies in the song that I barely remember. This one I want to show you guys because it's actually important to get that kind of regal atmosphere out. Let's see if I even remember how to play it. <laughs> I'm going to show you how that sounds with the two of them together. kind of get the idea it sounds like kind of triumphant that's kind of the, the mood I wanted to get across uh, and uh, at the end of that phrase uh, there's a small transition and then I go right back into the transition into the the B riff of the song so every time this riff is introduced there's a rhythmic cutout and I know that I've ragged on that before uh, but I don't like when it happens to allow for a different tempo a different rhythm the reason I do it in this case is because I want this melody to sound important. So if you have it be bare by itself, you can you can make it sound really important. But if you're if you can't figure out how to tie two parts together and you break the song apart and just have the drums and everything cut out so that the guitars can start something new, it, it shows that you really can't piece it together. But this is the same tempo all the way through. If if the drums were there, it would sound fluid. I just took the drums out on purpose. So I go back into that riff again. I put a vocal break in there. I'm glad I'm, I'm showing you guys this because I, I listened to the record recently. I can't tell what the fuck I'm hearing. Like, the production's pretty fucking ass. I mean, I, it's great for what we were doing, an unsigned band. You know, I'm, I stand by the record. I love the record. But um, there's things I wish I could do differently about it. I wish that there's some things that came across better. Um, so coming out of this riff, uh, I, what I like to do when I, when I make a transition happen is... Uh, I like to take the very end of the riff and uh, extend it with a different kind of melody that will either go from disc discordant to like consonant, uh, something that will like bridge the gap and then make the next part actually a lot more fluid instead of it just kind of shocking you, like having two completely different tonalities. So uh, the end of this riff, I'll, I'll show you again. <laughs> So at the end of the A part of it, right that part, I play that kind, that same kind of one two three four five six one two three four five six 
uh, but with a much more consonant melody. So the full the full run is. I'm botching that chord. So and, uh, strumming that chord fast there. So when I get to the next riff of the song, which is like the really the the big motif of the song, um, I like the I like the the drama of of strumming this chord. So um, I'll show you the, the the main motif of the song that we're getting. It was really nice to have two guitars when I played this, but I'll show you how it sounds with both of the melodies on top of each other. What I'm doing there is I'm able to use that octave shape and because of uh, the nature of the tuning I can still play the, the high melody on top. And that, that, uh, that fourth string there is open for all of that so the, 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 um, the lower string is so what you're actually hearing with that kind of chord going on is because this is my my octave of the note or not the octave because it's the same note I like how that resolves I play it first kind of by myself uh, the drums only play the accents and the next riff you actually hear when we come in together uh, is uh, a totally different kind of feel it's a lot more sinister sounding <laughs> developed that in a way I did uh, is because this is the this is a part of the melody I want you to remember and when when I make it darker sounding this is my anchored note instead so I went from having like a consonant sounding phrase to one that's mostly tritones In, back into the first melody really nicely and then you get that that nice like contrast in between uh, the motif and what the, the darker version of it <laughs> tough transition um, I knew what I wanted my next riff to be uh, so I wanted the transition to kind of showcase what that rhythm is going to be in a more like kind of smaller mindset so the transition is play it again so I'll show you how that sounds coming out of the riff um, I think this is a So the next riff takes that kind of rhythm and has a completely different tonality to it, but 
that transition was used to bridge the gap in between tonalities to make it kind of flow a little more naturally. So the next riff is, is it's kind of circus music-y uh, and it starts with a, with a minor second, which is everybody's favorite metalcore uh, sounding note. transition and then into that again so I can show you guys how those notes work. <laughs> so the goal of this passage was to kind of start the blast beaded section of the song. We're going to kind of be moving uphill to where the next climax is going to be. So I wanted it to have a faster tempo. Uh, and coming out of this, I do the same thing I normally do where I'll, I'll take the tonality of the riff and change it from discordant to kind of consonant to bridge to a more melodic passage. So as you know, this, this riff sounds pretty fucked up. So I wanted something that will kind of ground it more in reality afterwards. So the, the, the main riff again was... <laughs> transition out of it. Which it which is way more consonant sounding. I, I really love that transition. Uh, and then going into it is this uh, kind of ethereal passage. Just it's more of a transition than anything. back up a little bit. Uh, there's a lot going on in there because it's a very long transition passage. Uh, so going back from... All of that is just to build tension because the next part's gonna be one of the faster passages in the song, and I wanted there to be a really big dramatic build for that. So with this tuning, I get a, a power chord shape on the fourth fret and the, the, the zero fret of the next string. So I got my power chord here. Then I have another small transition here um, that I wanted to do the same thing where I wanted the transition to mimic the rhythm of the next part. So the whole transition is. So I know that sounds kind of nonsensical, but uh, the next riff of the song is. What I wanted to do with that transition is you hear how it's kind of like the same kind of rhythm but completely different melody. So the transition is there to serve a purpose to tie these two pieces together. I suck. then there's like a triplet transition. And I go back into the main motif of the song, but now it's uh, 
one chromatic note upward. And the cool part about this is given the tuning, I'm able to still have that same shape that I made the melody over the top with, and it has a different character now, uh, but it still sounds a little bit more dramatic because it's up one fret more than what it normally is at. Like a lot of, a lot of songs, you'll, you'll end on the main motif again and there's no development. I wanted this to sound like it's developed from, from A to Z, wherever we came from here. I wanted to have a completely different character, but still have it be having that memorable melody that you'll remember when you first heard it the first time. So now that it's one fret up, I'll show you guys how it sounds. I also do a different chord on the top. different trem pick pattern at the end of that. nice about this is moving the whole the whole phrase up where it normally was at so now with it one fret up even those palm mutes work one fret up because before I was now with one fret up sounds like like it if there's a little more like more of a resolve there. Uh, so going from here to here. And then I wanted to bring back, to end the song, I wanted to bring back that octave shape. But now it's a lot more consonant sounding. So. And that's the whole song. So um, I just kind of wanted to show you guys like the way my brain works when I'm trying to compose melodies. I like to come at it with a concrete idea. What I'm trying to do is express an idea. I'm not trying to showcase technicality. I'm not trying to showcase uh, the limitations of the of myself as a player, the limitations of the instrument. I'm just trying to showcase an idea I had in my head, an emotion I had. Uh, what I wanted to get across to you was what I was feeling. And that's the most important thing when you're trying to compose a song. And that's the reason I rag on all these bands, is I want to know their thought process for creation. I want to know what they're feeling. I want to know what they are trying to get across as artists and not just showing me that they can play guitar. Like, I don't care if you can play guitar. I care about who you are as a person. I want to get to know you through your art. And that should be what the process between the artist and the audience is. Like, we should be compelled by the artist, uh, by their mindset and what's in their hearts. And not so much what they can do technique-wise. Because, you know, who cares at the end of the day if you can't give me a product that showcases who you are. Um, so... Hopefully this song will, or this video will shed some light on what I do. I'm sure you guys are gonna shit all over it, and that's totally fine. And like I said, when I'm, when I'm ragging on these musicians, uh, different artists on, on these different videos, uh, it's, it's mainly because uh, I, I want, uh, it's not because I want them to write like me. I'm really happy with where I'm at as a writer. I know that the things I do to tie my stuff together is different than the way most other players will tie stuff together and that's how I want it to be. I want it to be when, when you're hearing a song I've written, you know that it's me. And when I when I hear any of these newer bands, I wish that that was the case. I want to know that it's the Zenith passage over, you know, whatever other band. You know, I, I want to know that what sets them apart aside from like their production. I want to know that it's them. And uh, that's what has really been missing since the turn of the century. Um, so in my music, I wanted you guys to hear me. 
when I hear other bands, I want to hear them too. I want to know who they are. That's my main source of criticism. And uh, for, for all the shit that you're going to hear in my music, you can, you can shit on it all you want, but you can't say that it's not me. Because I, can, I, I hope that the way that uh, I've brought this across in this video, you can hear that there's things that I'm doing that are kind of trademark techniques that, well, that, that showcase how I will compose a song. And, uh, you know, this is a chaotic song, it's a complex song, it's a tech metal song, but it still has, like, uh, phrasal continuity, it still has, like, a tonality that I'm in command of when I want the audience to be manipulated by it, when I want the, uh, when I want the, the vibe of the song to change, there's a reason for it, it's not because I want, uh, I want you to be shocked, it's because I want the story to tell that uh, in, in the way you're hearing it. I want there to be some kind of narrative there. Uh, and that, that's another thing that I really want to hear in these newer bands. I want to hear the narrative. Uh, so, uh, so many more recommendations of bands that are doing that. I know that it's hard to do that in, in technical death metal because, you know, it, it's, a, it's an innately, like, uh, it's, it's a style of music that is, is meant to not captivate the masses. You know, it's, it's, there, there's aspects to it that are deliberately not clear and they're meant to kind of like not confuse but bewilder you and uh, I want there to be a thread that I can start from A to Z where when you're listening to it there's all this chaos around but there's still a thread that unites the song and that's why I showed you guys the the transitions that's why I showed you guys why the melodies worked uh, from from riff to riff I didn't show you the full playthrough because I'm not trying to show you guys that I can play guitar. I'm trying to show you guys that I can compose a song. And uh, that's what I want to get out of the different artists I'm going to continue to cover on the channel. So I know that this went way over time. Thank you guys for listening. I know this is a super self-indulgent thing. But uh, hopefully now that you can see what kind of importance I place on the narrative of song structure, you can understand that I'm not just pointing my finger at, at these new bands because they're not doing what I do. I'm doing it because I can't hear them in their songs. I want to hear them. So that's about all I have to say about that. Thank you very much for listening.